Christmas of 1998, Kathy and I gave each other a set of plans each for the melon seeds gift. We didn't start building the boat right away. We did build a couple of other simpler Edwin Monk boats, a rowboat and a little sailing pram first. But then we started uh, the first melon seed in 2000 and finished it up in 2001. And finally in 2015, we built the second one. This is the fifth melon seed that we have built. Uh, we've built three 13 and a half footers. One of them was strip built and the other two were lap strake. And this is the second 16 footer. We plank this hull with Bead and Cove strips that we made. And we did try to keep track for the color and the grain to match it up as much as possible. That's what some of the marks were on the strips. We did install some shorter cheater strips which allow you to take out some of the twist as the, the longer strips go down the hull. And now for the real fun, the sanding begins. We drape the fiberglass cloth across the hull. And uh, there's a blue tape line there that you see that we actually trimmed the fiberglass with after we epoxy coated it with a rotary cutter. After the first coat of epoxy there had cured, we draped the fiberglass over the other side and put the blue tape on and did the same thing. With the rotary cutter, trimmed it off, so now we have two layers of fiberglass on the bottom of the hull. And moving right along, we did make patterns for the skeg, epoxied it, and put a screw in from the bottom into the skeg. We uh, finished or attached the uh, outer stem to the hull, and then applied a couple more coats of epoxy to everything to make it nice and shiny. And we marked off the bottom of the boat and applied a graphite finish to allow it to slide over some of the sand and rocks and stuff that you hit. And it's time to turn the hull over so we can start working on the interior. We uh, jacked it up in the air with some of these ratchet straps and uh, remove the molds from the inside so we'd have room to set it back down and flip it. And there's the first look of it with all the glue that we put in between the strips sticking up that we're going to have to remove by scraping and sanding. The hulls always seem bigger when you first turn them over. And just like on the exterior of the hull, it took us two sessions to glass the interior. We had to trim the glass a little bit, but it ends up that you have two layers on the bottom where you spend all your time walking. And we varied slightly from the plans on the centerboard case and the centerboard. We uh, shortened it a little bit so there's more room in the cockpit. 
and then we graphited the interior so that we had a slick surface. And the trunk and logs all epoxified to the hull. We laminated the deck beams and we made enough to go all the way down the hull, not just short pieces. And then we attached the shear plank. Installing the uh, deck beams involved some compound angles, so we cut most of those with the Japanese pull saw. We used Craig screws to attach up the deck beams to the shear plank. After the deck beams were in, we installed the mass partner, the mass step, the bow eye, and then we put a tube in to contain the mast should there be a problem during a capsize. We supported the deck beams in the aft section with a little leg and a board underneath similar to the king plank. Then we began work on the carlins, measuring and putting them in for the side decks. We added bench seats along the sides to make it just a little more comfortable to sail rather than sitting on the floor. Decking begins utilizing a lot of clamps and patience. And while you're waiting for the epoxy to cure on the decking, you uh, start the other project of building a bird's mouth hollow mast. And gluing up the blanks for the barn door rudder. And then we glassed it on the outside too. With decking complete, it's time to sand, and then sand some more, and sand a little more on the deck. And then, time to fiberglass, and time to sand some more. The color and green of the wood really pops once you get some epoxy and fiberglass on it. The combing on this particular melon seed is just a little more elaborate than we've done in the past. Uh, the curves were a lot trickier to work with. When you're not waiting for the epoxy to cure so that you don't get dust in it, you're working on all the side projects such as on this boat we decided to add a, a motor mount and we've got patterns here that we took before we put the deck on of uh, the frames, how they were laid out so we could make uh, some flotation out of uh, styrofoam. So we flipped the hull over again and pre-cut the styrofoam, put adhesive on it, and weighted it down against the deck. Kathy and I began to varnish the seats, the spars, the tiller handle, the rudder, and a few other miscellaneous parts at this point. We left out the shots of the priming and sanding and then 
painting and sanding and painting and sanding. And then when we finally figured out we were done with the bottom of the boat, we flipped the boat over so we could work on the deck. The rule is, if it's shiny, it's time to sand again. And at this point we are varnishing and I forget masking. I haven't mentioned masking this whole time, but every time something's painted, something's got to be masked. The end result is, is that everything should be shiny. There shouldn't be too many dust specks in it. And uh, no runs. And you think you're about done at this point, but you still have to attach all the seats and the hardware, the motor mount, uh, the rub rail needs to be oiled, the tiller handle has to be installed. But then it's kind of time to step back and look at it and see what it's looking like. It's looking pretty good. Soon after we finished the boat, a man by the name of Ray came by, and he wanted to take the boat home with him. Well, folks, meet Allure 2. That's T-O-O. -O. Ray's a pretty happy camper, I think, right now. <laughs>